Hello and welcome to another edition of For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest today is Richard Porth. He's the president and CEO of the United Way of Connecticut. He is a returning guest to the show. So first of all, welcome back, sir. Hi, Sean. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming back. Now, for those who shockingly may not have heard of the United Way, what is the United Way? United Way is an organization that's been around for 125 years. And, it's, and you've uh, been there every day. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No. Almost the whole time, <laughs> 125 years, and, and they're, they're known for um, raising money and helping uh, leaders and communities from all walks of life come together and tackle some of the community's biggest problems. It's kind of like a clearinghouse, like donations and stuff will come in and then it gets redistributed out, correct? That's right. That's right. And in recent years, United Ways all across the country have focused more on um, real community impact, trying to address some of the biggest problems in their community and pull people together from all walks of life to work together on that. So how was it decided way back when, 120 some years ago, that uh, an organization like this was necessary and that it was in fact a good idea as it turns out it was? Uh, it started in, in Denver, Colorado, of all places. A, a priest, a, a, it sounds like the start of a joke or something, yeah. a priest, a <laughs> rabbi, and Walk two into a bar. Yeah. ministers. <laughs> Uh, honestly, who got together and decided they should try to organize the way the city of Denver responded to people in need and, and get as many people together to chip in. It was a way to allow people of modest means to be part of the solution, to chip in what they could and to be part of the leadership that addressed the problems uh, through volunteerism and through um, charitable giving. And it's only grown since that 120 some odd years ago. And I would imagine that the problems that were faced back then are a little bit different maybe than they are today, as far as today's issues are concerned, right? For sure. And, and um, as an example, uh, the report that we just put out, uh, it's called ALICE, Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. Sort of a stretch, but it's a way to talk about people who uh, work hard, but still struggle with financial um, hardship, uh, who still struggle to make ends meet. So that's a big issue that the United Ways in Connecticut and 14 other states now are trying to focus on and call attention to. Yeah, and I kind of was going to ask you before we even got into Alice, you had mentioned the United Ways are kind of focused on local concerns, local issues. When you, when you speak of Connecticut, what are some of the local concerns and issues that the United Way could and, and does help with? Uh, United Ways, there are 15 local United Ways in Connecticut, and um, they do great work all across the state. Uh, in this region, it's the United Way of Southeastern Connecticut, and they run the biggest food distribution center in this, this part of the state. Uh, United Ways in other parts of the state uh, work hard on uh, early childhood education, K through 12 education, supporting uh, early uh, uh, grade level reading. Uh, many of them work on basic needs and homelessness, uh, helping people avoid homelessness and helping them with uh, food and other emergency needs. Uh, there are a lot that uh, are engaged in uh, helping people find jobs or getting the training they need to, to move up the ladder, so to speak. As uh, Depending on the time of the year, are the needs of the people different? Um, and your ability to be able to help them out. As we tape this, we're in the fall, getting ready to go into the winter, getting ready to go into the holidays. We kind of almost are in the holiday season here, almost now. Uh, are things different now? It's a good question, Sean, yeah. As the weather gets colder, uh, you know, the need to keep people safe and warm, uh, people who might be uh, in danger of becoming homeless, to keep them safe and secure really uh, increases, and a lot of the local United Ways are engaged in efforts in their own communities to prevent homelessness or uh, to get people to the right place that they should become homeless. Our United Way, the United Way of Connecticut, it's the state association, Sean, but we also uh, run the two-on-one Health and Human Services Contact Center for the whole state of Connecticut. And we're, uh, over the last couple of years, working with the State Department of Housing and the Connecticut Coalition to End Homelessness and lots of great shelter providers here and across the state. We're the, the front door for people who are about to become homeless, and we help them find um, either stay in their homes, that's the preferred outcome, 
where to find the best place and where they can get in and out and, and, and back on their feet again as quickly as possible. A lot of the local organizations that will reach out and ask for help from the United Way, I think people find it interesting about how they go about doing that um, and the procedure for how you are able to, to dole out the resources that are available. Yeah, and in, again, in recent years, more and more United Ways have tried to, working with people in the community, identify some of the biggest challenges and make that the priority in terms of the way um, they allocate funds and the way uh, they dedicate their, their leadership efforts uh, to bring people around uh, together to, to address those, those issues. Uh, I, I want to get back to Alice. Yeah, two years later, we're going to talk about what we found out. But you, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, Alice is an acronym. What is it and what, what, what was Alice's purpose or is its purpose? Yeah, um, it started, we did our first Alice report a couple years ago when I was in to talk with you. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, when we did it two years ago, uh, it was us in four other states. Now there are 15 that are doing it. Again, ALICE stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. It means people who are working but still uh, struggling to make ends meet. And w what, what the report shows is that the traditional method of trying to understand the scope or scale of financial hardship, the federal poverty line, it doesn't give the full measure of the number of people uh, who are really struggling. And so, for example, in Connecticut, with the latest ALICE report that was just l released a couple weeks ago, about 11% of the households in Connecticut are below the federal poverty line, but 27% of Connecticut's households um, are above that federal poverty line, but below uh, an ALICE threshold, we call it the household survival budget. They don't earn enough to pay for basic necessities in life. So the poverty line is way too low it's then. Too low. too low. And so how do you get legislators or whoever it is that can be have this brought to their attention so that line can be raised to a more appropriate level? Yeah, I, I have to say that uh, there, there's been good response on the part of elected officials in Connecticut. Um, um, they, they're, you know, they're, they're sympathetic to the, to the uh, struggles that Alice families have. And, um, you know, there, there are different ways uh, that the, the state of Connecticut and, and people in the, in the regions and municipalities are trying to help Alice families. When you look at the household survival budget, the two most costly items are housing and uh, child care for f f young families, uh, two adults and uh, an infant and a toddler. And, and so there have been efforts to try to uh, generate more affordable housing in more different communities uh, in Connecticut, and the state has made good progress on that in, in the last couple of years. Uh, likewise, with child care, um, that's a struggle. It can be even more expensive than housing. You know, when people. you talk about child care, sometimes, depending on your income level from a, jo a job, the, uh, a parent might consider whether they should actually take the job and or not take the job and forego the child care because the child care is so expensive. That's right. That's exactly right. And at the 211 Contact Center where I work, we get calls like that every day from families who, who are trying to figure out how to earn more income, but who know that um, if, if, uh, if uh, both parents go out to work, they're going to incur pretty significant costs for child care. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough issue for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, you had meant we, we talked about you know who to who should you go to like for example to raise the poverty level if that's possible legislators do you does the United Way find itself I don't know if lobbying is the right word but at you know at, at the you know the capital going with these issues with these concerns we we um, we do we don't lobby per se right, so I didn't much think that as, was the right word no, but, yeah but you but you're it's a good question um, you know, across the country. United Way's um, motto is give, advocate, volunteer. And um, the advocate part of our mission um, involves in Connecticut over the last couple years a, a, a policy agenda each year which is focused exclusively on Alice families. And as I was saying a couple minutes ago, uh, we've been focusing on affordable housing, uh, affordable child care, um, uh, jobs that pay well, um, and uh, training and education that helps Alice workers climb the ladder 
uh, career advancement. That's the kind of thing that makes it onto our legislative agenda. From your perspective, because you are helping people out uh, with housing if necessary, jobs if necessary, those markets in Connecticut, how do they look from your perspective now? Housing market, jobs market? Uh, you know, we compare, uh, we compare well to most other states still across the country in terms of the level of pay in most of our jobs. So one of the r things reported on in the, uh, the new Alice report is uh, how our hourly wages break out. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we are the first state to break through the 50% number. In other words, more than actually 51% of our jobs pay better than $20 an hour. Do they find that they have to because Connecticut is an expensive state to live it's, in? It's partly the result of the high cost of living here, but it's also the result of the fact that Connecticut for a long, long time has, has been real strong in managerial, technical, uh, and, and professional jobs. Um, in this part of the state, you know, jobs re related to electric boat and and now they got new contracts recently. New contracts and uh, in the Hartford area, UTC and Sikorsky and the, the uh, insurance companies and, uh, and, and so forth. We still have a good core of higher paying jobs. Uh, and, and, and so in Connecticut, the strategy of helping Alice workers get more training, more education and move up the ladder, it can work in a way that it, it wouldn't in other states. How about the housing in Connecticut, as far as your ability to be able to find it if necessary? Well, housing is expensive yeah. uh, in Connecticut, like a lot of places in the Northeast. Um, the state of Connecticut has, has made affordable housing a priority in the last few years, uh, and, and the result is that um, uh, I think it's 7,000 new units of affordable housing have been created in the last four or five years. Uh, more is needed to be sure, um, but we're starting to make progress there. Organizations like the Partnership for Strong Communities are working in, in municipalities across the state to encourage them to consider uh, building more affordable housing. Uh, uh, not to mention the fact that um, many of these towns would like to keep their, their young people in those towns uh, and not have to move elsewhere because they can't afford to live in the town they grew up in. Right. That's a tax base you don't want to lose, That's right? That's absolutely right. Uh, let's take a break and come back. Uh, why don't you give out the website for people to go and learn more about the United Way, and then we'll come back and chat some more. Yeah, our web address is www.ctunitedway.org. Richard Porth, President and CEO of the United Way of Connecticut. We will take a short break and come right back. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay right there. Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest, Richard Porth, President and CEO of United Way of Connecticut. Uh, when we went to the break, we had people go to the website. What's on the website for people to see and go and learn? Well, uh, there's a special part of the website. It's uh, www.alice.ctunitedway.org. And if you go to the Alice website, there's a, a ton of information on, uh, that is included in this report. Uh, and you can see what the Alice household survival budget is in your town or in your part of the state. You can see how many households in your town or your part of the state are Alice households. And, um, and you can learn more about what United Ways are doing to try to help Alice. Well, let's stay with Alice for, for a little bit because there's so much more that we can get into and sort of get down to the in intricacies of it uh, a little bit. As a matter of fact, when people hear about Alice, and even if they read up on it, it's one thing to just sort of a, get a generalized view or understanding of what Alice is. But when you talk, when you personalize it, and when it gets personal in the sense that it's not just some person you don't know, but it's you or a family member, a loved one, friend, something like that, then it becomes a big deal, and, and people get way more interested at that point. Exactly, Sean. And I, you know, look, a lot of people are, are doing research and talking about. Uh, the middle class under stress and people who work and struggle. Uh, we're not the first to come to this issue, but what we hope, the value we're providing is that we're, we're presenting this issue in a way that people can really understand by personalizing it. So we say, have you met Alice? Do you know Alice? And we, we, we talk to Alice families, and Alice could be the the mom, the single mom who's got a couple kids and really struggling at the office between childcare and holding down the job. Uh, Alice could be the dad who worked for 15 years in a good paying job 
lost it, no fault of his own through downsizing or whatever, and can't find a new job that pays at the same level. Or uh, Alice could be the, the, the young student who just graduated from college with $30,000 worth of debt and can't find a job that can help them uh, pay off that debt and set up their own household. There's a lot of different folks who are Alice. They could be our neighbors, our friends, family members, people we work with, and they do important jobs in the community. Alice fixes our cars. Uh, Alice minds our young children and takes care of our, our older parents. Alice works as a teaching assistant or as a, as a hospital aide. Alice uh, does home health care. Um, Alice is the security guard. There, there are many ways that Alice people, uh, folks, contribute to their community. We, we run into them every day, and we know them. Uh, if you take just a minute to think about it, all of us know some Alice people, sometimes pretty close to us. And you always, people, you have a sort of a vested interest when suddenly it's someone close to you. You, you know what I mean? You, you, um, you pay attention more. You want to learn more about it and maybe get active and involved in some way if you can, right? Yeah, because you, you look at that person and you say, wait a second. I know them. They're good people. They work hard. It shouldn't be like this. Right. I, I need to help. And, and it's been really gratifying to see the way people have responded to United Ways across the state to try to help Alice families. There actually, you can go online, isn't there like sort of an Alice simulator that you can do online? Exactly. So, you know, in the same idea, we, we want to help people walk in Alice's shoes. And so uh, we work to, to create uh, an online Alice simulator, an exercise that people can go through. You, it's at uh, www.makingtoughchoices.org. And if you go there, you answer four questions to begin with. What kind of housing you'll live in, what kind of child care you'll select, uh, what kind of job you'll have, and what kind of transportation you'll have. And then you go through, the, potentially, uh, there are 150 or 160 different interactions. And the goal is to see if you can make it through the whole month without running out of money. And it's eye-opening. Um, you know, lots of people have already used it, and we've gotten really good feedback. It helps people who might not under, otherwise understand how tough it is to realize, wow, there are some tough decisions. What happens if they do use it and find out that the numbers are just not working out for them? Does it change their mindset? Do they suddenly realize, well, I've got to budget a little differently? Or, you know, maybe even a, um, you know, a bigger change in their life would be, you know, uh, you know, changing career paths or just something along those lines, whatever it is they have to do, right? Yeah, they do. And um, so, uh, for example, um, if you pick a certain type of child care, um, uh, facility-based child care, almost always you're going to run out of money before the month's over. And so if you've done it and you, and you don't make it through, you go back and you select a different kind of child care or a different place to live where you might have, in the first time around, said, I want to drive a car, and the second time you realize I can only use public transportation. And, and it really shows people uh, who've gone through this process, wow, there are really some tough things where you have to weigh pluses and minuses of how you spend your money. Tell me what a gig economy is, because that's a term that I haven't heard before. The other thing the Alice Report does, the new one, is to look at different trends which affect uh, working families who are, who are struggling financially. And one of the new things that's been happening over some years now uh, is this, this idea of a gig economy. And that what they mean is job to job or gig to gig. Uh, and it's on-demand employment. You think Uber driver or Lyft driver or um, TaskRabbit or the employment agencies that people work for, or even some of the big um, uh, department stores that only hire people in chunks of time. Uh, and and, and, and uh, one estimate is that nationally, in the next few years, 15% of all workers will be in those kinds of on-demand jobs. Because is it becoming more of a service economy in general? Is that why? It's, it's, yeah. it's more of a service economy. And, uh, and, and, and if you think of the, the, the implications of that for workers, they don't have steady hours. They don't, they, they don't necessarily get that 40-hour weekend like they'd like to. They typically don't have uh, benefits. And uh, it really makes it tough. Now, for some Alice families who have another job, Driving for Uber 
they can add to their That's extra income. income. It's good. Yeah. It's a good thing. And you can kind of do it when you want and don't have to when you don't exactly. want to. Exactly. So it's, it can be a good thing. But for people who rely exclusively on those kinds of jobs, it's really a tough uh, way to try to make a living and to take care of your family. Do you yourself uh, embrace the technology that is, you know, everything that can be an app on your smartphone, whether it's Uber or Lyft or all the other things that are there? Well, here, I'll, I'll answer you this way, Sean. It's inevitable. Okay, no you matter, have no choice. No matter yeah. what we might think of technology, um, it's going to happen. You have to keep up or you'll be left behind. Yeah. Right? I, another part of this report talks about the jobs that technology will make obsolete over time. Yeah. Look, it, this has been happening for a thousand years. Since the first uh, you know, assembly line came yeah. online, right? Yeah, and, and, uh, and that's still happening. So you, if you go into a fast food store, sometimes you can order your food on a touch screen right. without ever talking to anyone. Right. Um, or uh, if you're at the grocery store, you can check yourself out now. Right. Or at the Home Depot, and 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 that's um, that's a trend that will continue, and it tends to affect the kinds of jobs that Alice workers hold, and so there's a concern about all right, this is going to happen whether we like it or not, and it, as it happens, Connecticut has one of the highest uh, percentages of technology jobs. That's a good thing for us. It makes us competitive nationally and internationally, but we also need to be thinking about, all right, when these some of these jobs start to disappear, how are we going to make sure that uh, Alice workers and other people um, have good work that can give meaning to their lives and, and help them take care of their families? When those jobs do go away, do they have a tendency, is there a tendency to have something new come up on the other side where new jobs are available? But they would obviously have to be trained for whatever this new thing is. Exactly right. I mean, that's the hope, and that's a theory. And, uh, you know, over time, that's been proven to be the case case most of the time. Uh, hopefully, other jobs will be created along the way, maybe even better paying jobs. Uh, but as you say, we're going to have to make sure that K through 12, our education system, is is giving every kid coming up a chance to hold those good jobs uh, and to climb the ladder and to earn more money into some of those newer jobs. What's the typical day of uh, the in the life of the president and CEO of the United Way of Connecticut. Is it something different all the time or? or I'm, 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 besides I'm, going on TV, of course, yeah. <laughs> I'm a lucky guy. I, I feel lucky to work at United Way of Connecticut. My, my, um, my organization serves as both the state association for all the local United Ways in Connecticut. And it's great to work with them because they're doing really important, really good work in their communities. Uh, but we also, United Way of Connecticut, runs the 211 Health and Human Services uh, contact center for the state. And we, we operate 24-7, 365 days a year. Last year we fielded uh, like 320, 330,000 calls. And uh, lots more people get help from us through our website. We've done separate shows just on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the phone number. And, uh, and you know, it's, a very, it's a valuable tool to have, for sure. Right. And so... Even on a bad day, Sean, I, I, all of us who work at 211 can go home and think, you know what, we helped a lot of people today. It's a great feeling. Yeah. It's a great feeling. Does uh, the United Way of Connecticut ever work with United Ways in other states, maybe surrounding states, yes, neighbors? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. I actually uh, was in a meeting recently with my counterparts from state associations from all over the country where we talked about Alice and the other ways that we could work together. Are you, are you looking for volunteers at any point in time, United Way? Is there always uh, something that somebody could be doing to help out in some way? Right. Again, a big part of United Way's mission is that give, advocate, volunteer. And so for a long, long time, United Ways have tried to recruit uh, good people from the community who can help out. Lately, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the volunteers in this part of the state, New London County, are working with United Way of Southeastern Connecticut in that food distribution center. It's a great place to volunteer and to help yeah. your neighbors. Uh, in in, uh, in uh, this part of the state and elsewhere, more and more people are recruit, being recruited to work at VITA sites, volunteers mm. and tax assistants. That's a great, great organization, too. It's a great idea. Right. You know, if you make under a certain amount of money, it's a, it's a free service that's available to you exactly. a certain amount per year. I think it's a, it's a great organization, a great idea. Um, how, how are things going with the funding for United Way? You run on grants and things of that sort? 
We do. Uh, the, the local United Ways have been working hard on their campaigns, and many of them are um, in the middle of their campaigns right now. Um, and they depend on uh, good people from all over the community to help them in their work. Uh, and so that, you know, the idea of uh, donating to your local United Way is really important to help with these kinds of issues with Alice and the other things that they do. United Way doing fine work and uh, appreciate everything that you're doing. One more time on the website for people to go and learn more. Uh, to learn more about Alice, you go to alice.ctunitedway.org. All right. Richard Porth, President, CEO of United Way of Connecticut. As always, a pleasure. Hope you'll come on again. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Sean. You can see this show and many others on our YouTube site. Till next time, I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Take care.